I think it's recording. Oh, uh, hello, camera over here. Got to look at the lens. It's a new camera, everyone. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Lovely. Okay. Hello, friends, and welcome back to my channel. It is a new camera angle, and I am excited to be here. My name is Zach, aka Crochet Mizetti, and I am a crochet content creator, plushie maker, ami gurumi, pattern designer, all round crochet fiber artsy person here on the internet. In today's video, we are going to be reacting to some of your very, very spicy and very controversial hot takes here in the crochet community. I've seen so many videos like this in the past by like Made in the Moment and various other creators and I, I just want to get in, I want to be involved. I've been really, really wanting to do one and I don't think I've really seen any that are more directly related to like the Ami Gurumi plushie world. So I was excited to see what my community had as is in regards to opinions regarding that. I asked my followers over on Instagram, YouTube, threads, what their most controversial opinions were in regards to fiber arts, knitting, crochet, etc. And I am going to react to them here on this video. So I've collated some of my favorites and I've just added them in a very, very random order over here. Some of these I have read like once as I just copied and pasted it from whatever social media I got it from. And from what I've seen, you are all very, very cheeky, uh, very, very spicy and very, very controversial. So I'm very excited to get into them. But first, let's take a moment to hear from today's sponsor. Say hello to today's video sponsor, Universe. Universe is a drag and drop user-friendly app for creating websites where you can easily pick a personalized .com domain and customize your site to your brand. You can use it on your iPhone, your iPad, your computer, whatever you see fit if you want a bigger screen it works just fine but i prefer using the phone just to make my quick edits on the go my favorite part about universe is being able to work on my website wherever i feel like i can do it from public transport i can go do it in the park when i'm crafting even when i was designing my website i was able to just like chill out on the couch for two hours put on my favorite youtubers and create a fully functioning website. I decided to use my universe to create a one-stop shop of myself as a content creator. So when brands reach out to me, I can give them a snapshot of what I offer as a content creator and what kind of ways that we can collaborate together. Although I can totally see myself using this as a way of offering services as a custom plushie artist or even some kind of like crochet educational provider. When making your website, you can start with one of the universe templates or a blank canvas. You also have the option to chat with the AI assistant Gus, but because I necessarily didn't know what I wanted to go with at first I opted for a template option and it was so useful all I had to do was inject my brand colors and just make sure it was all within the crochet Mizetti brand I was then able to just drag and drop different links as how I see fit and automatically link them to other web pages on the app if you're in the US the universe sell block will enable you to actually start selling creations if that's your jam or even start selling different downloads like I do as a pattern designer universe is free but you can make the jump to pro to remove universe branding get your own .com custom domain, unlock custom menu styles, gain access to the code block, and even gain the ability to have discount codes. With Universe Pro, you will also get a lower flat 5% transaction fee. There are no hidden fees with Universe and quicker payouts. You can use the first link in my YouTube description to get 25% off your first year with Universe Pro. Otherwise, you can just use the second link to use Universe for free. Thanks, Universe. Thank you, Advertising Zach. What a great video. Now let's get on to the opinions. So actually, actually, no, wait, wait, just before we start, I should say that these are all just completely opinions. I am, uh, I'm just a guy on the internet and I am <laughs> just kind of casting out what I think. I, you don't have to believe me. I am not the all knowing, all being opinion on the internet. So you can disagree with me if you like, you can agree with me if you like. These are just my opinions and I don't know, I'm here to, I'm excited to see what you say about them in the comments below, so I think with that, like, don't, this is not a serious video, don't, don't take it seriously, so uh, let's just get into it and let's see what you all had to say. I'm a little nervous. Okay, number one, uh, plushies are inferior to cotton or acrylic amigurumi. So, I'm thinking this person means, like, like, the plushies that I make, like, literally the ones all behind me, and I don't know if you can say that, I think, like... <laughs> I think the two different types of yarn have their place within the Amigurumi community. I think with I make, like with what I make, I really like making this kind of cutesy, smushable, 
creation, whereas I think if you're gonna be using cotton or acrylic with your work, I think you would be wanting to get something that's a little more detailed, potentially even more artistic, and maybe even something more durable. I don't know if it's, inf I, I wouldn't say that one is a more inferior than the other. I think they just have their places within the Army Gurumi community and that's that. So no, I disagree with you. Also with a lot of these, cause there are like 40 to 50 different opinions. I am probably gonna be racing through a few of them. So let's just do what we do and give an opinion as we give it. Number two, there is literally no need for a giant yarn stash or a yarn wall. I don't know what constitutes as a giant. I have a lot of yarn, like literally if I turn the camera this way. <laughs> so I guess I am technically in that area of having a giant yarn stash yarn wall. I get this, what this person means. I have seen some creators out there who have like literally yarn from like floor to ceiling. And I think that's a bit wild. I think with my yarn stash, it's like, it's large and I do think I have way too much, like more than I necessarily need. But I, yeah, I, I don't think that, I, I agree. I agree. I don't think there is a need to have a giant yarn stash or yarn wall. I kind of just like the aesthetic. I like, cause this is also my bedroom. Like you guys don't see it, my bed is right there. I like waking up and seeing a big bright, colorful wall of yarn for the aesthetic. But the need of that versus the actual like, want of that, I don't think it's actually needed. I think it just looks nice. <laughs> Sometimes I go stand by it when I'm trying to figure out colors for a project and I just like look at the rainbow and I need it all set out in front of me. And so that helps me out, but I, I agree. I don't think there's a giant need for it. I think you just need the yarn that you need for your project. Yeah. Number three, these are contradicting opinions. One person said yarn under is the only way to go for Ami Gurumi and the other person said I'm not a fan of the yarn under technique. Now I am someone who does yarn over with all my stitches and for those who don't know what that means, it means when you are crocheting something like this little plushie here, normally if you do the yarn under technique when you're doing every stitch you yarn under instead of yarning over and it creates like a tighter stitch. For Ami Gurumi that makes it like, it means you have a lot more uh, neater stitches and it just overall gives you a better look uh, that's that's a very common opinion there but I don't do yarn under because I already have such a tight tension and I have no need to and I think with what the second person said I'm not a fan of the yarn under technique I I mean I'm not really a fan either I use yarn over in all my clothing pieces all my army good me pieces every single piece I do and I haven't really had an issue with that but I think if you are wanting a way to improve the tidiness of your army gunami, then using the yarn under technique is a very, very valid way of approaching that. But I wouldn't say it's the only way of doing it because Look at, look at that. <laughs> look at the talent folks. So I think uh, I am evidence that yarn over is perfectly fine and yarn under is not the only way to go. Number four, felt eyes are way overrated. I, I <laughs> I, I don't like felt eyes myself. I I don't know if that's just because of the materials that I have here in Australia. Like, I don't know if the felt is different than the felt that they use uh, over in North America or other countries where people are making felt eyes. Uh, my experience with making felt eyes on my Cricut was a lot of trial and error for trying to find the correct materials to use. And I just felt that the, the felt that I was using was kind of just, it was not good. And it was just a huge waste of, materials it was just and then when i put them on the pieces the glue didn't really stick well and if you put them on the wrong way it was hard to move them around and uh, it just wasn't good they're just destined to fall off for me and i've heard people saying that about them as well so i'm i think they can look cute but i think in the sense of if you're not just having the plushie as like a novelty item and you're potentially giving it to children or something like that then i don't know if it's the most durable thing and i i do think they're a lot more celebrated than they are personally personally that's just me like if you love your foul eyes then kudos to you enjoy but for me i like my little black beady safety eyes so <laughs> that's what i do and i think some people might say those are overrated so you know each to their own number five joined rounds are better than stitch markers with a spiral round fight me i will fight you i think I don't know why you think that. I've. This isn't the only person who said this. 
uh, with regards to Ami Yurumi, he's saying that when you go around and you join in the round, you go up like one stitch and then you go around, join, go around. That makes like a spine up the back of your Ami Yurumi. The reason why I work in a spiral is because it makes it like almost seamless when you're crocheting around. And I don't know, I just, I cannot fathom how a joined round would not make a, like this kind of stitch pattern of a little spine going up the back of the plushie. I can't fathom it and I don't know why you think it's better. <laughs> and that's, that's that for me. That's why I work in the spiral. I mean, potentially because when you're working in the spiral it can make your, your like the lines of your stitches technically not even, but that's just, that's just army good to me generally. Maybe it makes it a bit flatter. I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. So that's my argument there. I don't understand why you think it's better. I just, I can't, I can't fathom it. Number six, acrylic is so much softer than natural fibers most of the time. So why wouldn't I use it? I want to know what acrylic you're using. The acrylic that I've like handled here in Australia has always been so scratchy. But I mean, so is some of the natural fibers. So I don't really know, like, like, <laughs> I don't know, I've, I've only had like soft natural fibers. I mean, I've handled some scratchy like wools and things, but I don't know. I don't think I've really found like a soft acrylic that I would use. I mean, you can use it. I don't really know what the controversial part here is. I guess a lot of people say natural fibers are better and there's like a lot of hate towards using acrylic, but I don't, actually no, I don't, who is hating on acrylic so much? I don't think I've really seen people hate it that much. I think acrylic's fine. I can see arguments for why it would be like, oh, it's plastic, etc., etc. But for like softness versus other fibers, I think some acrylic soft. I mainly use this is a polyester yarn that's very soft. Um, I mean, I wouldn't use that for clothing though, but I don't really have an opinion on this one. I think use it. Why not? Number seven, uh, magic circle sucks. <laughs> Chain. Chain 2 meth method works just fine. Look, I use the magic circle for all my plushies. I think it works great if you want to use the chain 2 method. Kudos to you. I personally always found that I had a little gap in the top of my plushies whenever I use the chain 2 method, and I didn't like that. So I use magic circle. But if chain 2 method is working ju like just fine for you, so be it. That's, that's all good. I, I agree, I think it works just fine. That's that. Number eight, a share, comment, tag, save shouldn't be a requirement just for a pattern test. This one I find very interesting to do with when people are doing their pattern tester calls, not testicles, tester calls. I think at first I was like, yeah, like they shouldn't be like doing that. Like how dare they advertise out their pattern, but also like, no, I don't let them advertise out their pattern. I think they should. I think if you're like a large enough account that you don't need to create engagement to like have people find your pattern, then I don't think it's that necessary. But I think if you are a small account and you want your your pattern to be seen by people and you are trying to get like people to apply for your pattern days, I mean, you may as well. I find pattern testing to be the best way to meet others in the community. I find it a great way to, yeah, bring the community together. And I think if people are sharing, commenting, tagging in your pattern test and bringing those people to your post, to your community, I think it's pretty valid. I don't know, that's just me. I also think with, if you are a pattern designer like myself, there are a few points where you're advertising your pattern out to the community. And one of those is with the initial pattern tester call out and that's also your one chance to also be like like introducing your pattern to the world so uh, for me i think it's fine i think you can say hey this is my new pattern who's keen tag people who you think might be keen to get involved too well, let's go girls and have at it imagine if you didn't do that like if you're a smaller account and you put out your testicle and you're like hey anyone want to test for me don't do any, don't interact with the post. <laughs> I think it'd be a bit weird. No, I, I think people should have at it. I think if you're a large account, then probably not. You probably don't need to. You probably have people you can maybe reach out to. I tend to, I don't think, I don't even know if I do any of those anymore. I used to when I was, had a smaller account, but not anymore, so there you go. Number nine, I can still use acrylic yarn and I can still care about the environment. I, yeah. I agree. I think with a lot of these things, so I think about this a lot because I use a lot of polyester yarns, which also isn't like the best for the environment. But I think regardless with the art form itself, it's it's a lot better than what, like how much rubbish fast fashion or uh, is it called fast fashion for like doll production, large doll production 
companies or manufacturers are doing. It's a, it, it creates a lot less when you're making handmade plushies and handmade dolls and things. So I think you can use whatever yarn you feel like and still care about the environment. I think you're doing something that is a lot slower pace, isn't creating as much waste as what these larger manufacturers are doing. So I think, I think it's fine. I agree with you. You can't slightly alter a pattern and call it your own. I think with this one, like I agree, yeah, you you shouldn't, but people do. <laughs> like, I personally don't do that. You can kind of see where people have get, gotten really, really good inspiration from other patterns and they're like, here's my new pattern. And I'm like, I've, I know that turtle. <laughs> like, isn't that things turtle? And then it's like, maybe run one row difference. I think people can take it upon themselves to recognize when someone is pretty much copying another person's pattern, pattern like that and they can take it upon themselves to be like, hey, I'm not gonna support you because I can clearly see that this other creator has created that pattern just before you, you know? It's, yeah. So I agree, you, I mean, you, I say, I'll say you shouldn't, but to say you can't, I mean, you can. <laughs> you can, technically it is a different pattern, I would say, but I would, I would highly suggest you don't. Yeah. <laughs> It's a bit of a, it's, it's, that's, yeah, that's, that's naughty. Don't do that. Number 11, blanket yarn is hot garbage. <laughs> personally, personally, I hate blanket yarn. I think it feels like a towel. I don't like its texture and I just, uh, it just feels weird to me. And if people don't know what I'm talking about when I say blanket yarn, uh, it's within the chenille yarn umbrella. I find that there's like almost like a velvet plus chenille, which is what I use with like the Honey Bunny from Hobie, the Premier Yarns. But then you also have like blanket yarn, uh, which you have like Burnett blanket is the only one I can think of. They're technically both chenille yarns, but the blanket yarn is, I find to have like a little bit more of a coarse texture. And I personally, I just, I don't like, I don't, I just do not like how it feels. I. I don't like it, but like, I don't think that means it's hot garbage. <laughs> like, there are people out there who love that yarn. There's people out here who hate the plush yarn, so each to their own. Um, I also think a benefit of blanket yarn is it doesn't really shed as much, so there you go. For me, I agree with blanket yarn as being hot garbage, but I think generally it's not actually hot garbage. I think it's just up to the creators to decide that. No sew patterns are kind of lazy and don't encourage crafters to work on their sewing. Yeah, I, no, I agree. I think no sew patterns, like, I think there are benefits to no sew patterns. I think they're great for markets. I think they're great for beginners wanting to just like power out something very quick and maybe sell it or maybe it's a quick gift or something like that. I think no sew patterns are brilliant and exceptional for that. When it comes into, I don't know if lazy is the right word, but, and how they don't encourage crafters to work on their sewing. I, yeah, I, I can see that. I think a lot of people are very reluctant to sew in the first place and there, I, I find in a lot of conversations and things, or even with my own patterns, people are like, oh, you could make this no so," And I'm like, no, you, you should learn to sew because it's part of the craft. It's putting pieces together. I mean, I, I can no sew some things in my patterns, but I like the look of it when I sew it together and I enjoy the process personally. And I think it does kind of halter people from many aspects of the craft because they become so used to just doing no so patterns. So I don't know if they're kind of lazy, but yeah, I think they're good for quick makes and I do think they kind of, their allure of them being quick makes and a bit easier in that regard does kind of halter people on being able to develop their own skills in sewing. So that's that. People are way too quick to accuse others of stealing slash copying their designs. I agree. I think people sometimes want to feel like that they are the best designer there is out there and they're like, hey, that's my work. But I mean, a pocket whale is a pocket whale. A little buzzy bee is a buzzy bee. They're not the most, they're not the most difficult patterns to figure out once you've had some experience in Amigurumi. I wouldn't go around accusing people of those things, but like literally if someone has got like one of my patterns and they're selling it, then I'll be like, hey, that's quite literally my pattern. But if someone's gonna make something similar, I'd be like, ah, yeah. I don't know, that's such a, it's a, it's a very complex one, that one. Uh, you can go into so many different arguments around it, so. 14, wash your hands before you crochet, people. I mean, yeah, are people cro- like, I mean, I've generally got clean hands. I wash my hands after eating before crocheting. Like, if my hands are dirty, I will wash them. I don't know if you're trying to, like, avoid having your natural oils get onto the yarn and things. I think that's 
pretty normal. <laughs> like, so I don't know how much you should stress about washing your hands. Like, if your hands are dirty, then definitely wash them. But if your hands are like pretty clean, I wouldn't say like this is the most strict thing. If you're selling things, be a bit more cautious about that. But yeah. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> there are definitely mean girls. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay, so the next one, uh, two different comments, same kind of vibe. There are definitely mean girls in the crochet community, and there's a mean girl vibe in the community. Not yours, but at large. Yeah, I mean, if you've seen Emma's video about the uh, the buying votes drama and everything like that, I'll have a link below just so you know. I was one of the ones over on Reddit who was talking about my interactions with said creator and how they've affected me and many other creators around the community and how we're still waiting for apologies and things. So I think there's, yeah, I I don't know. I don't know if you call it like, the mean girl vibe. I don't want to like corner people into different cliques and things in the community and being like, you're the mean girls and you're not the mean girls or something, but it's, I don't know, people, there's gonna be mean people in all communities and things, and I don't know, just leave, just leave them to it. It's, sometimes I feel like it's, it's, what is it, kicking a dead horse? What's the saying? There's something there. I think it's just, let's just leave it as it is now. I don't know if they're gonna change anytime soon. I don't know if they'll ever apologize. If there's, if there's mean girls in the community and they're not the ones that I'm referring to, then just, just don't interact with them, just block them. It's not that scary to block someone. It's not that scary to unfollow them and just not interact with their content. If you don't like the person's vibe, you don't have to follow them. If people don't like my vibe, you don't need to follow me, okay? It's just, just leave them to it and yeah, there you are. But also call people out on their behavior. Anyway, number 16, I like AI and what AI is capable of is cool. So I think this person's talking about in regards to crochet generally and I agree I think AI is actually kind of interesting I think people posting AI images of crochet I think that's stupid don't do that and we've seen <laughs> we've seen the we've seen some yarn companies posting those things and being like what do you think do you like this isn't this amazing what AI can do and I'm like stop but I am kind of interested to see what AI can do I, I've seen so many of those AI posts over on Facebook and I see people being like oh my god that's so cute and sometimes I'm like oh that would actually be quite a cute design like imagine using AI to help kind of configure what you have in your brain to create a small almost like a mold of what you'd like to design I don't know if AI will ever be able to write like a, a brilliant pattern for you or something like that because I think AI my understanding is that it actually gathers art and other information on the internet that already exists and then puts it together for you so I don't know how like good that is for artists. Uh, I don't think it's very good for many artists, but I think there is... I don't think it's something that should be shunned away. I think it's something that we should all look at as potentially a tool in the future, once we kind of have more of an understanding of it, or unless people are really keen to experiment with it, then definitely go out that way, because it's AI is coming whether you like it or not, and so it's whether... It's, it's up to us how we handle that within the crochet community. So I think there's I think there's very cool things we can do with it. I agree. I think AI is exciting, although problematic sometimes. Okay, sewing is a part of toy making and a skill that people should learn when making toys. I agree. As I said before about uh, no sew patterns, I think people should learn to sew. I have a sewing video or sewing tips and tricks video, so go check it out if you want to learn a bit about joining Ami Gurumi pieces together. I get many compliments in the comments, so thank you everyone for boosting my ego on that one. <laughs> but yeah, I agree. I think sewing is a huge part of toy making and I just want to encourage everyone to keep practicing with it and you will get better at it and find it actually quite fun to do. Too many people rush into pattern designing without working on their skills enough. I don't know if there's ever going to be a set time that someone should start pattern designing if that's what they're interested in. I think people should feel free to experiment with whatever they feel like doing. When I went into pattern designing, I had no idea what I was doing. My first one, I didn't get tested at all. I was like, here is my pattern. It is perfect. I just like uploaded it onto Ravelry. I just took, I've taken it down since, but I was like, I'm pretty sure that was full of like spelling mistakes or confusing instructions and things because I had no idea what I was doing. So I think like, I don't know if it's rushing into pattern designing without working on their skills enough, but I think like, I don't think there's a set time that you should jump into it. I think give it a try if you're up for it. Uh, 
and the results that you get from trying will be what you get from your current state of skill. Anyway, uh, <laughs> contacting the designer for pattern help should be your last resort and not your first. I don't know. I mean, I don't really, uh, to be honest, I don't get contacted that much about my patterns because they're so perfect. I don't know what this person would mean in regards to this. Like maybe they've been asked a lot about how to do certain things. Like if you're, if you're, if you're confused on how to do like a single crochet or a technique like that, don't contact the pattern designer. That's, that's something you learn from YouTube. That's what you're expected to know before getting into the pattern. Like if it's something in the pattern itself that might be confusing that you don't understand, I think that's enough merit to contact the pattern designer and be like, hey, I don't understand your pattern. Like, I don't get it. Like, because they have sold something to you and therefore I guess they should be giving you that service along with it. But if it's something that you could figure out in Amongst Friends, then probably yeah. But I wouldn't expect like the pattern designer to respond right away uh, as well. So I would say probably message your friends first being like, does this make sense to you or something? And then the pattern designer, yeah, maybe maybe they are the last resort. Yeah, not if you're trying to figure out something very basic within the pattern. Maybe, maybe ask a friend who does know. But if you don't have the friend, I guess you have to ask the pattern designer, so... There you are. So I kind of agree with that one. Number 20, uh, calling yourself a hooker isn't funny unless you actually are a sex worker. Yeah, yeah, that was, yeah, stop that. <laughs> Number 21, working with black yarn isn't all that bad. I agree, I think black yarn's fine. I think it's a little difficult to see sometimes, but if you're working under a light, that's fine. I, I wouldn't recommend it to beginners, but I, yeah, I agree. Crochet Army Good Me is better than knitted toys, in my opinion. Personally, I like the aesthetic of crochet toys versus knitted toys uh, and that's purely because with crochet you have the ability to go, to go omnidirectionally with your um, stitch because you only have one active stitch at a time whereas at knitted toys you are uh, you have like many many active stitches at once um, and it's a bit harder to maneuver around different shapes and things so I feel like knitted toys if you like the aesthetic then yeah fair enough but personally I agree I think Ami Gurumi is much better place for creating plush animals uh, than knitted toys just because you can make many many more uh, shapes using an easier technique with crochet so I agree. Getting angry at someone for mistaking crochet for knitting is stupid. Yeah, I, so I make so many jokes of this on my content being like, how dare you call it knitting? Uh. But like that's like, it's a standard like trope within the crochet versus knitting world. Like I personally, like I don't really care. <laughs> like, if someone came to me and said, what are you knitting? And I know they're not from like the yarn fiber arts world or they're like not actually like that interested. They're just trying to make conversation. Then I just kind of tell them what I'm doing. like they'll forget what I was doing 10 seconds later. I wouldn't get angry at someone. I wouldn't be upset really for them not knowing. Uh, sometimes I'm like, oh, it's crochet. And they're like, oh yeah. I'm like, yeah, it's like difference. But they, that's like only if the conversation really needs to continue that far. Usually I don't really mind, but I will, I will keep making jokes about this on my feed and you better all keep interacting with them. When a crochet designer brings out a new pattern then heaps of other designers do patterns that pretty much look the same and isn't that different from the original, you, sh you shouldn't really be writing a pattern. Oh god, I want to know if this is like a particular instance that this person's talking about. I think I see, yeah, I've seen many patterns out there that do look similar. I mean, you can write a pattern. It's so weird. It's so, I, I'm, this is so hard to talk about. It's kind of like, like, it, it feels like sometimes when people are designing that they want to, there's like a race to be the first person to bring out a pattern like that because they see the first one, they're like, oh, I can do that too. And then they do the same thing. And you're like, well, why did you do that? It already exists. But I guess maybe you're trying to race to get that to be the other person's pattern out there or something and be like, mine was the original or something. I don't know. It's a bit weird. I do notice it. I think a lot of people in the community notice it, that, that, that like all these patterns might look alike. But to say someone shouldn't really be writing a pattern, I don't know if it's that they wouldn't be writing a pattern, but I would encourage them to try to be a bit more original. Like I think they can write the, if they can write the pattern, they can write the pattern, but I would encourage people to be a bit more original and that would be what I'd say about that one. So. Uh, number 25, crochet is a <laughs> crochet is low-key ugly in clothing and should be reserved for craft things or army good to me. Knitting is 100% better than crochet for garments and worn items. This one is a very much a personal preference. 
piece. I so as I said before, I kind of agree that crochet army goodomi makes sense versus knitted toys. When it comes to clothing items, I personally also like knitted items a bit more. I just think the drapes a bit better. Like I've got my vest that I'm working on here, and it's just like it just moves like a lot lighter. It feels a lot lighter. But when you grab something like what this originally was, which was the sweater, it was just like it may look cool and have cool textures but it just it's so I mean it probably looks really nice now it's just so heavy and it's just so like it's just thick <laughs> it's just it doesn't yeah I find the drape and just the the tidy details of knitting looks better in clothing personally personally but I don't think that means crochet is low-key ugly <laughs> I think it, there is a place for crochet clothing like granny square clothing looks really cool I do really like when people do uh, cool like images on switch and sweatshirts and things like I'm thinking of like woolen buggers I really like all their jumpers I really like them all in the crochet style I don't know if it would look as like an I don't know if novelty is the right word if it was done in the knit style but because it's done in crochet I'm like oh that's that's impressive I think crochet has a place in the clothing world and knitting has a place in the crochet world uh, in the crochet world yeah knitting has a place in the crochet world no I think knitting and crochet have their separate places in the clothing world and is the kind of vision that you want to bring about in your garment I personally like having like a very tidy uh, looking piece and that's what I find with a knitted finish but with a crochet finish I like how people can be a bit more creative with what they make with it so that's that. 26 it makes me cringe when someone takes the lighter to the ends of yarn and safety eyes. I know with the ends of yarn they're just melting it so it doesn't like flake anywhere and I I think that makes sense to me. I, I know that's what you do with the chenille yarn here the velvety chenilles and that's just the technique that you do. Melting the back of safety eyes under plushies, that freaks me out and I agree with you. I, I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I don't think we should be really melting plastic on like polyester or acrylic plushies. It's, I don't know. That's just me. I, yeah, I think that's a bit weird. Why are people melting them? Is it just so they stay in a bit better? I, I think what they need is they think they, I've seen people do like hot glue in the back before they put the clip on. Uh, otherwise you just need to get a tighter stitch because if your safety eyes are falling out that's that's on you you need to either drop a hook size or yeah use glue I don't think you should be melting things I don't see a need to correct people about oh wait this one we already said that's all good yeah about knitting or crochet they'll forget in 10 minutes anyway yeah I agree low slash no sew plushies are less detailed and look lower quality than plushies that require sewing I don't necessarily disagree I think it's just kind of the aspect like the limitations that low sew no sew plushies have makes it really hard to really have some of, like some of that smaller detailing that happens with sewing so I kind of agree. I don't know if it's like lower quality and I do think there are some plushies out there that are low so or no so that do look really good but I think the majority of them sometimes they look a bit random just because of how they're constructed together and I think it would have looked better if people just sewed it together. And that's just me. I'm very pro sewing with plushies and I think everyone should be too. Number 29, uh, chunky slash roving knits have the same integrity as some fast, fast fashion products. Uh, yeah, because the, the I'm not really familiar with like roving yarn, but I'm thinking it's like the Hope Macaulay yarn, which is like unspun. I don't know, it's kind of like thick and like really pills up a lot. That's what I understand about it. And I think if you're going to be making something out of that yarn and you're only going to use it like once or twice before it's pretty much ruined, then I agree. I think it might have the same integrity as some of those fast fashion products. So. Number 30, stop shaming acrylic yarn. I don't know who is shaming acrylic yarn so much. I, I see people everywhere being like, acrylic yarn's fine. Don't, yeah, don't shame us. It's all good. And I'm like, I don't. I honestly don't know who is shaming acrylic yarn so much. I don't know who these people are you're, you're all interacting with. I Acrylic yarn is fine. I think it is. I, I, I think there's personal preferences and if people are coming out of the... Coming out of their little caves and being like, Ew, look at that yucky, yucky yarn, then that's on them. That is not your problem. If they're not paying your bills, then you pay them no mind. 31, you shouldn't say bisexual unless you're bi or queer yourself. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah, it looks crap when people use too big of a hook and it leaves gaps. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, if you have gaps in your, your plushies, you need to drop a hook size. That's, that's that. <laughs> I wouldn't, I mean, I wouldn't call someone work crap. That's, don't do that. Don't, don't say, tell someone that it works crap. Just tell them that, that you can see the stuffing, I guess. <laughs> and that they need to drop a hook size. Number 33, yarn used in a pattern is practically irrelevant. Make it up, baby. I agree. I'm pretty sure in the majority of my patterns, I literally just say what kind of size yarn, plush yarn, and that's just like recommended. Most of my patterns can be done with like smaller acrylic yarns, cotton yarns, things like that. And as long as you have the right yarn, like the right hook size to match your yarn, then you are fine. I don't, uh, yeah, it's, unless someone really, really wants to know what yarn or hook size you use for that particular pattern, then then have at it. But like, most of the time people will have, like, have access to different yarns anyway, so it's not gonna work. So there we are. TikTok isn't worth anyone's time or phone space. Uh, I'm assuming they're regarding like crochet TikTok or be potentially advertising as a small business. I think it is worth. I get all my trends from TikTok. If you're gonna be looking for trends on what people are doing, things that are happening, I would look to TikTok. I would go on there. I'd find what sounds are trending because it normally takes like a week or two before that even comes to Instagram. I think everyone should be on there. I think we should all be posting on there and leaning into whatever new social media thing has come about and wherever the trends are coming from, so... I think it's worth it. You can never have too much yarn. I think you can have too much yarn. I disagree with you. I think you can. I think I have too much yarn. I think sometimes I get sent yarn from companies and I'm like, I don't need this. I just needed payment. Thank you. <laughs> Was that another controversial opinion? I don't think so. Pay us. I hate people who make tops out of velvet yarn. I can only imagine that that would be so hot. Like, so I use a lot of like velvety chenilles and if I was ever going to make clothes or like just wearables out of that, it would be so hot. It would keep in all the heat. So it might look nice. It might be nice and velvety, but I can imagine just wearing it would be a nightmare. Washing it would be a nightmare. I, yeah, I agree with you. I mean, I don't hate the people. I just wouldn't suggest that yarn. I see a lot of ugly ummy good me, and I don't know how people think it's cute. Come on, be kind. Uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what who I don't know who you're targeting with that. I think yes, ugly ummy good me exists. But we're all we all started somewhere, we're all learning, we're all improving, and I think it's better to share a bit of positivity and just say something is cute than to say anything else, you know? So maybe everyone's just being kind and they're just not saying things. And I think that's okay. I think that is fine. Number 38, embroidered details look better than felt. I'm assuming you're meaning like embroidered eyes and felt eyes. Uh, well, one, I'm a per I am mean, I personally don't like felt eyes. I don't really use them. I think they are a bit random. Although I think if you felt it on the eyes, like with using a needle, I think that looks pretty cool if you're very talented at it. I find that difficult to do on this kind of yarn here. I find it easy to do on like acrylic or cotton yarns. I think those felt eyes look cool. Uh, embroidered details I think also look cool. I, yeah, if you're really good at embroidering those things. I personally like this. So whenever I have a larger plushie and I don't have a yarn size, um, I will use uh, Crow of the Flows video on how to create these kind of eyes and I'll just make my own out of just crocheting them. And I think that's really cool. So, I don't know, I think it's just personal preference, what you want, so have at it with that one. Patterns with lots of little things and so on are sad face. Yes, yeah, I agree. I mean, as much as I encourage sewing, when there's a lot of little things to sew on, I'm always like, Ugh, I can't be bothered. But usually those patterns look so freaking cool once they're all pieced together. So I agree that it's a little bit annoying to have to do that much sewing, but I think the outcome is usually pretty, pretty good. So it outweighs it. Number 40, you don't need to monetize your hobby, just enjoy it for being fun. Yeah, I agree. I monetized mine early on and I don't I don't know why I did it. I think it was because someone told me I couldn't earn money doing crochet or couldn't like do a full-time gig from it. But here I am now trying to do my best, trying to earn my living through YouTube. I also enjoy doing social media and content creation. So I guess I really just went down this whole monetizing route. Uh, but yeah, you don't have to do this. You don't have to do this, people. You don't need to make a crochet account. You don't need to make a crochet business. You can just enjoy crochet, make cute plushies, have it as a hobby, things like that. 
So, I agree. And that was our last controversial hot take or opinion. I hope you all enjoyed my opinions or my reactions to those. I can't even remember what I said half the time and I uh, sure as hope I didn't offend anyone or make anyone upset with what my opinions are. They are just my opinions. You can agree with them if you want. You can disagree with them. You can let me know in the comments what you agree and disagree with. Like roast me if you want to. I really don't mind. I just want to say thank you for coming along on this little journey and I'm excited to get into more YouTube content. I also want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon for continuously supporting me on all my pattern designs, all my content creation, everything like that, and everything that I do as a content creator. You are all just so, so amazing. That's all from me today. Happy crafting, happy crocheting, happy knitting, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, because if you aren't subscribed to me yet, what are you doing? I put in all this effort for you, and this is how you repay me? No, I'm just kidding. Okay, have a great day, everyone. Bye! Mwah.